Yo, this might be my favorite film ever made. There are multitudes of different layers to this film and different interpretations that could be made while still remaining simplistic enough to understand non-analytically. That being said, the entirety of the film can be further understood by others, as today I wanted to talk mainly about its bombastically cinematic ending. Throughout this intro I have been very careful so as to make sure that I do not use any footage in the film. The reasoning behind this is because I think a film should be an entirely blind experience beforehand. Thus, I am giving a spoiler warning throughout the remainder of this video. I would highly advise that you do not watch this video if you haven't experienced this film, as it's a cinematic benchmark, in my personal opinion. Okay, so let's start with the context behind the ending. Our main character, Andrew Neiman, is a student at the most prestigious art school in the United States. He aspires for a title with the greats like Charlie Parker or Buddy Rich. Neiman is dedicated, but is not willing to let drumming take over his life. He still has relationships and connections that separate him from drumming. Eventually, a music teacher by the name of Terrence Fletcher comes into the picture and selects Neiman as one of the drummers in his jazz band. Excuse me if I don't know the lingo. Terrence Fletcher is soon revealed to be exceedingly manipulative, as well as using pushing students to their limits as an excuse for the rampant bullying found in his classroom. Fletcher uses constant manipulation tactics against Neiman, like accepting another much worse drummer into the band. As Neiman's obsession begins to grow, he begins to lose the friends and family that he relied on beforehand to stop him from going towards the dark side. It is also told to the audience that one of Fletcher's former students had passed away in a car accident. Eventually, incidents ensue that get Neiman kicked out of the band due to his own migration from normalcy, and soon afterwards, it is revealed that the aforementioned deceased student hung himself in an attempt to release the PTSD from Fletcher's teachings. Neiman decides that in order to prevent circumstances like such from happening again, it would be the best course of action to press charges against Fletcher. This gets Fletcher fired from the music school, and he begins to start playing gigs at a local jazz bars. Eventually, Neiman recognizes Fletcher and engages in conversation with him, which leads into Fletcher inviting him to a session as they were lacking a drummer. However, this is all a foil for Fletcher to betray Neiman, as Neiman did so long ago. Fletcher gives him the wrong music, and so Neiman makes a mockery of himself on stage. This leads Neiman to co coming back on that stage and proving himself as one of the greatest drummers of all time, and showcasing how far he will go in a quote-unquote triumphant ending. But what if it wasn't necessarily as triumphant as it could be interpreted? And what if it wasn't triumphant whatsoever and instead deeply depressing? The film is very well made and I think the director as well as the screenwriter, Damien Giselle, was pointing towards a very cinematic ending which forced the filmmaker to make this seem like a much more happy ending, essentially lying to us, the viewers. However, through much more keen eyes, much more layers can be revealed through this ending. For example, the fact that throughout this film, Neiman's obsession growing is directly correlated with his clothing becoming darker. For instance, at the start of the film, he treats it as more of a passion instead of a fixation, and is wearing white, but by the end, of the, he is wearing a complete black uniform. It should also be noted that in the middle of the film, he can be seen wearing dark grays, further cementing that this was a choice of the filmmaker. Another visual cue is the fact that in specific sequences, he submerges his hand in normal brisk waters, and from his drumming, he finds that blood completely fills the tank. So what does this mean, you may ask? Well. I think that it means that he is largely driving out a large fraction of his life to pursue drumming. Sure, this story could be interpreted as a boy trying to become one of the greats in the drumming niche. Or, it could be considered a story of a father losing a son to jazz. Some consider the final look that the father gives at the end of the film a happy remark at the fact that he finally understands the extent that Neiman is willing to go to pursue his dreams. That's a totally fair analysis, but I prefer to view it as a look of pure shock and horror as he loses his son to a disturbing and dangerous obsession. I think the true ending of this film reflects this earlier statement in the film to an absolute T. I'd rather die drunk, broke at 34 and have people at a dinner table talk about me than live to be rich and sober at 90 and nobody remember who I was. It's truly a disturbing fate knowing that some will not leave behind a powerful legacy and that their name will largely be forgotten. That's why it's so powerful when Neiman's legacy is finally cemented. Unfortunately, he will most likely serve poetic justice correctly and die an unfortunate death in his late 20s due to maybe a drug overdose or something like that. It's bleak, but it's the most realistic reality possible for Neiman due to his reckless carelessness in pursuing his legacy. From then on, he probably spent every waking hour of his days drumming and practicing drumming. Maybe he he got really rich from it, but he doesn't love it anymore. He's lost all passion for it. 
He's just stuck in a loop where he keeps living for nothing and turns to substances like drugs to get a possible sweet release for even a second. He barely interacts with anyone anymore and probably has the same fate that the aforementioned deceased student of Fletcher suffered because that's all Neiman is anymore. He's not even human. He just works only as a student of Fletcher. In conclusion, the ending presented is most definitely the subject of interpretation, but there are multiple scenarios in which this quote-unquote victorious ending could be considered extremely depressing. Uh, bye.